System one loaded. Booting up system. system. Loading. Gabriel Valentini. Loading. Dan Brozo. This is the Digital Lizards of Doom show live at Meltdown. Meltdown. Welcome to the Digital Lizards of Doom show. No, I'm just kidding. What's yeah. up, guys? Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the view, Gabe. It is the view. It's the view with uh, the Dan view and with Gabe. You. No, the view with you. Sweet. Sorry, guys. No, seriously, though. Welcome to the Digital Lizards of Doom show live at Meltdown. Yo. I'm here with my disabled guest. Yeah. Um, thank you for using the politically correct term. Yeah, thank you. I, well, actually, although I call you my guest, you're the you're my host. Co-host. Uh, yeah, I guess well, co-host. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Co-host. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, <laughs> you are lying. That's not it. <laughs> um, yeah. So as you can see, um, his leg's pretty busted. I fractured my kneecap the other day. Nice, dude. And I wish I had a cool story about it, but I don't. No, 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 no. We do have a cool story about it. You might I, have a cool. story I do have it. a cool story about All right, it. Tell tell the story right. about how I fractured my kneecap. So, um. As a lot of you might know, Dan and I are philanthropists, and um, sure. we uh, we frequently make visits to um, um, the, the Amazon. Yeah, to take care of. There's a children's hospital in the Amazon. Oh, yeah. I was gonna do go for the whole like Greenpeace thing, like saving trees. It's part of Greenpeace. No, oh, it is. Yeah, children are. There's trees growing in this hospital. There's trees growing in the children. And Dude, this is way darker of a story than I wanted to get into. Anyways, long story short, yeah. we were sleeping in a tree to save it from getting cut down. Mm -hmm. and um, With some children. Dan always hogs the bed, so we just had this one little branch. And I just decided to... It's my bad. I was just trying to scoot him over. I really didn't mean anything by it, but he slipped. It was really moist on the branch, and There's he fell. There's a lot of moss. And uh, cracked his leg yeah, on, fell on about, a rock. Fell about 300 feet. To the ground, yeah. Um, from an ancient Amazonian redwood, and uh, <laughs> some natives actually tended to my wounds. Yeah, but I mean, they don't. They have made the, it worse. They don't have the, yeah, they made it worse. <laughs> it's, it's terribly infected. It was now. fine, but they fractured it. I'm, I'm infected with the parasites now, and uh, yeah, it's a whole it's a whole deal now. <laughs> yeah. What's crazy too is that everyone you knows I'm joking, but how close to reality that story actually is. Compared to what really happened. Um, Let's not get into it. Because I slipped in the rain doing nothing cool at all on a fountain. It, oh. That is actually what oh. happened. That is not close at That's all. That's right. I, I forgot. I was not helping anybody. I was not saving trees. Oh, I yeah. slipped on a fountain because it was rainy out. Sorry, I don't know where I got that tree thing from. I thought, nah, that's what you told me. I told you I told you that you were there in a tree with me and you came hey, man, out. My life is a blur, dog. I'm just taking it one day at a time like everybody else, man. Yeah. So anyways, I have this thing on my leg and it's going to be there for about 3 months. Um about Week, 6 dude. weeks till I can walk on it again. And uh the first thing that I thought of when this whole thing happened is is how I told you to break a leg on the show? Yeah. <laughs> no, that did happen. Yeah. But it was a couple days later, like, so break I'm not going I'm not going to hold you to blame on Go that. Go kill him. Um but yeah, they give you crutches for this. And of course they give you crutches. Like, how else are you going to get around? But crutches are, I feel like, the most antiquated, ridiculous thing ever. They're, like, not comfortable. They're not very helpful. They, like, give you bruises in your armpits. Aww. Like, I'm not trying to complain about it. I'm just saying, like, this is, like, a technology that has been around for way too... This is, like, a... This is, like, like Tiny Tim, dude. This is, engines. like, Lewis Carroll. We should, have, we should have something way more advanced than crutches by now. Yeah. As, as like, a society, shouldn't we? Uh, yeah. I haven't thought of, like, a good alternative yet. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an idea guy. I'm more of a complaining guy. But, yeah, crutches. We'll have to hit up deal. Neil deGrasse Tyson. You They're know like, what it is, probably? Dude, this is BS, fool. You know what it probably is, though? What? It's the big crutches industry. They're just holding everybody oh, down. Oh, yeah, dude. That's right. It's the Illuminati. They, they, like, lobby the government every year when they I, try to come out with new technology. I can see that for sure. It's big crutches. In like six years, Matt Damon's gonna make like a super intense a like documentary about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about your story. Sick. Um, with a few embellishments. Uh, yeah, but 
I'm trying but to yeah. make a Dallas Buyers Club pun, but I can't think of a good one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm, okay. kinda, I'm on, like, pain pills right now, Dude. too, so I'm not, like, firing on all cylinders. We don't mean to keep apologizing, but this episode, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of centered around Dan and his... It's centered around my left kneecap. Yeah. and uh, I'll put up a picture of the fracture, too. Dude, so that'd be know, cool. Real. That'd be really cool. Yeah. yeah, we are actually, we're not joking. Like, he really did fracture yeah, you can his see kneecap. In the frame, right? Yeah, totally. I don't know if they can see it in the frame. Yeah, I got this brace on and cameraman, stuff. Cameraman, can they see it in the frame? Oh, so I he went. He says yes. So he says they can the, see it. I went to the doctor yesterday to see if I needed surgery on it or not. <clears throat> and uh, the nurse, I'm like gathering my stuff and I'm struggling because I have the crutches and I had like a way crappier uh, knee brace before that went down my whole leg. It was super uncomfortable. And I was, like, struggling to stand up. And she's like, oh, you can put weight on that. And I was like, uh, my injured <laughs> leg? She's like, yeah, it's a, it's a patellar fracture. You can put weight on that. And I was like, uh, but it hurts really bad. She's like, no, you should be able to put weight on that. I was like, yeah, I can punch myself in the face, too. But, it like, what good is that going to do anybody? It hurts really bad. Was she just was she joking with you? Or? No, she was dead serious. She was dead serious? Yeah. And then I was like, does uh, it help man. to put weight on it? She's like, it doesn't hurt. And I was like, yes, it does hurt a what lot. What doctor is this? Yeah. It, it's, it was the nurse. I'm not going to blame the entire oh. office. All the other nurses were very cool. But this one nurse was just like. Oh, dang. She, man. like, didn't believe me that it hurt. I'm like, uh, I broke my knee, like, two days ago ago this hurts really bad that's weak dude yeah so i was just like dang Aww. nurse i'm not gonna give out any names but <clears throat> nurses don't be like her don't do learn, it learn from her mistakes you're gonna make dan brozo really upset and I personally upset. As, as his friend i don't like seeing him upset and it sucked the last couple you wouldn't days like me when i'm upset because oh nice very nice did you guys catch that anyways <laughs> Which I know we're talking about his leg, and this is the D Light show. We should be talking about, you know, what's going on. Well, I was talking about crutch technology. Maybe there's like an indie crutch developer that could like. Oh, did I just? Were you working on a segue? Yeah. I to I totally missed it. I mean, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by all means, please continue, Dan. Indie crutch developers, <laughs> please hit us up with your new your new blueprints for technology. Maybe 3D print some new crutch technology. Also, speaking of technology, yeah. Dude, Dan just discovered the sickest thing. You guys probably can't see it, but it's... Uh, oh, we have a it's, footrest it's, right now. Yeah, it's one of the D-Lod boxes, and I'm pretty sure... Yeah, cameraman. I'm, us, pr I'm pretty sure quick. we're going to... Yeah, can you grab that? Dude, <laughs> isn't that awesome? Yeah, yeah I'm so pretty sure... my foot hurts really bad if it just dangles, so I wanted to rest it on something. So yeah, now we have it on And that. then I just kind of jumped in, because like, I'm, oh. I'm just a follower like that. And uh, I mean, you see something comfortable, you get involved. Dude, I'm kind of down with this. Like, yeah. if we do this every episode, I'm not going to protest. All right, cool. <laughs> um, so you had something you wanted to talk about. You had you had some goods <clears throat> you brought in. Dude, I did have some goods. Um, so we have this company that sent us some goods. They checked out the first episode. Yeah. And they're uh, they're called Zombie Fresh Clothing. Okay. Super sick, super sick dudes. Um, they hit me up, asked if. Uh, if we could check out some stuff and uh yeah told them i'd rock it and so check these shirts out dude so what on. you should know sponsors that is that gabe only wears ridiculously sleeveless shirts <laughs> so <laughs> so not yeah. true so well, not true i mean look at him right so if you what? want him to wear your shirt you have to cut the sleeves off but like down way past the nipple <laughs> keep talking i got shirts oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no they're tight shirts Totally. Show them. Bring them up to the camera there. You're mobile. You can walk over to the camera. I am mobile. Yeah. Here. Get up. Get up in it. <laughs> yeah. So go check them out, guys. They're pretty sweet. You can find yeah, them on Instagram. Tight. Zombie Fresh Clothing. Not um, only are they great as t-shirts, but they're also great as like FDR style, like put over your lap because you're wounded because <laughs> I have polio kind of deal. Dude, that's pretty rad. You know what I'm saying? A little history lesson right there, too. There you go. Yeah. That was one of our presidents. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, by the way, if you didn't know that, polio is a horrible disease. Polio was also. one of our presidents. <laughs> <laughs> polio. <laughs> that is Sir you're Reginald twisting my polio. words. Yeah, um, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm loopy. I'm on painkillers. I'm Dude, sorry. It's all good. Yeah, yeah no, they're, they're pretty tight shirts though. I and it kind of fits, right? Zombies. That's yeah. why that's why I was saying we could plug it on the show cuz it totally works out. Zombie Fresh. We talked about The Walking Dead a couple episodes mm -hmm. ago. I complained about The um, Walking Dead. Yeah. You know, zombies are kind of like... They're in vogue right now. They're super in, so go check out Support Zombie Fresh Clothing. Yeah, they're pretty These guys sweet. are rad. Talked to them online a couple times. Super sweet dudes. Yeah. So um, you'll see me rocking this. So um, See him rocking that around town. 
So other news? You got any other news um, you want to talk about? Well, I had one more cool? thing, that, but it was kind of just in like the same I'm injured kind of rant thing. Dude, no, that's awesome. You down? Yeah, I'm super down. All right, so in the same in the same token as as the crutches thing, um, we need new crutches technology, but everybody knows that. That's just like, you know, that's like a people talk about that around the dinner table every night. Yeah. What they don't talk about is how come there aren't cool braces out there? How come there aren't like? How come I can't get a, a, like a cast with like a because you kind like of X Men print going over it or like a Mega Man cast that looks like a, an X Blaster? That's you know? pretty sick. But you, you know, what I'm but saying? dude, honestly though, you did kind of get screwed because you got the in between. You know what I mean? So like, what this isn't mean? even a real cast. So people can I know, draw it's not it even a real cast. Nobody do can all the sign cool this. stuff. You so, could if I got like one of those silver like art pens, you know. Yeah. But no, it's all fabric. I mean, yeah, it'd look really it's weird. It's gonna fall off, but it would not look cool at but all. But anyway, so I was I was looking like on the internet, like does anybody have, like, are there cool knee braces out there? And the only one I can find was was Tim Duncan, NBA player for the Spurs. He has a Punisher one that he rocks. No way. And it is so tight. I'll put up some pictures while we're talking <laughs> about it. It's super tight. Like, why can't I have a Punisher knee brace right now? I would pay for it. Dude. Just so I had, like, a cool, instead of just, like, What's oh. What's this thing, too? Is this, like, some Oh, yeah, this is how you, like, set pack? the angles on it. No, I wish it was a battery pack. Yeah, no, this uh, is, you can connect it via Bluetooth It's not like a Batman phone. thing where he can, like, kick through walls and stuff like that? No, I wish. That's the other thing. Batman had a cool knee brace that, like, made him stronger. Yeah. Not mine. This one just makes me less weak. She was about to give you one that would have made you stronger, but, but you were, like, like hating smack. on her. Yeah. Dude, the other thing that that nurse did, <laughs> I'm just going to harp on her for a while, <laughs> is uh, the doctor was like, yeah, we'll give you a knee brace that gives you some mobility, like, you know, like, maybe, like, 60 degrees of motion. And I was like, sweet. So... First, the nurse came in and gave me one that was a medium one, and my leg is so swollen right now. And she's like, just like forcing it onto my leg, and I'm like, "Ow, oh, that hurts! That hurts! That hurts!" And she's like, "No, we got to make it work. This is the, this is the right size." And uh, I was like, "Do you have any bigger ones?" And she's like, "No, we have a large one though." And I was like, "That's bigger than medium. Go get me the freaking <laughs> large one." And then she starts putting it on, and like this thing on the side is the settings. You can set like how how far it comes out. And uh, she was, like, setting it so it would be straight. And I was like, nah, I think I want some bend in my leg. It hurts really bad when it's straight. And she's like, no, you don't. You want it straight. I was like, can you just go talk to the doctor, please? Like, I'm tired of, like, making my case for myself right now. I'm injured. Like, go talk to the doctor and tell him tell you injured. what to do. Yeah. So it was ridiculous. Anyways, I want a Punisher knee brace. And I think you deserve a Punisher knee brace. We need new crutch technology. Heck yes, dude. And uh, maybe I can get a zombie-themed knee brace. <coughs> dude. Maybe I can call get those dudes call the to boys like zombie. silk screen it over my knee brace. Sounds good, man. Dude. Sounds very good. That's how we tie it all together. Sick, dude. All right. Do we want to start talking about some comic books, though? Yeah. But uh, first of all, our guest today. Oh, yes. Yeah, dude. That's going to be super tight. Are we going to have a guest today? Or yeah. Gonna, yeah. Who is well, it? We have a guest today. Matt Alcobia. Really? Yeah. The guy he doing here? runs a record label that you may <laughs> or may not be associated with. That's Independent right. Independent artists. Uh, dudes from Australia has a very very cool philosophy in his business, and I'm stoked to hear some of the uh, like how it all works and that nice. kind of stuff. Because yeah. that's that's something I like. I've always been curious about like the the nuts and bolts side of a record label and how it works, but don't really know anything about it. Yeah, and his is a little different too. And like I res- really respect how he does things. So it'll be tight. Sorry, I was trying not to laugh. You said nuts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still. <laughs> I am not on pain meds. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> yeah, he runs but. the, the Nards and Bolt side of the business. Yeah, yeah that's cool, man. Um, so, yeah, so we'll get him on the show. But cool. uh, first of all, let's get to some Dizzy Doom comic boom. Yule. All right, guys. Let's do this Dizzy Doom's comic boom. Uh, today, we're doing a little bit of a themed version of it. Yeah, um, we've been we've been mixing up like how we're doing the comic books, our selections, how they've been working recently. And um, guess what? It's our show, so get over it. Yeah. <laughs> oh no way. <laughs> um, so today we're doing team ups. Why? Why are we doing team ups? Well, dude. Avengers 2 is right around the corner. It is. Age of Ultron. It so, is, yeah. I mean, I know it's not really like Avengers theme, but just, I was like thinking. The concept dude, of let's team do ups. Some, yeah. Let's do some team up books today. You know? Unlikely allies, yeah. It's an independent show. We can do whatever the heck we want, dude. Yeah, exactly. Heck, yeah. All right, so kick her off, man. Dude, so the first one I got is from First Comics. Um, it's 
Star Slayer meets Grim Jack. Can you so tell sick. me about these two heroes? Because I haven't heard of either of Star Slayer or Grim Jack. Yeah, dude, they they've been revived like a couple times. You guys check that out. They've been revived a couple times. It kind of died off, like in like the late nineties, okay. and it keeps coming back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, but yeah, Grim Jack is pretty rad, man. It, it's funny because what makes well Star Slayer. Yeah. Came first. Yeah. Um, but what makes Star Slayer so cool is that it's a really dark... I mean, and this is from 84. I mean, this mm. issue is from 84. The mm-hmm. the series is, I think, even from the 70s, if, if I'm correct on that. Yeah. But, um, but what makes it so cool is it's a very dark story. It's a very dark tone. It's similar to, like, um, heavy metal oh, or... Okay. Um, it's a lot of, like, metal-type imagery. Like, um, even the guy... Uh, oh, I can't think of his name right now. The artist who does... Who was responsible for um, Star Slayer did a lot of, like, metal albums and stuff like that. Okay. So, it ha- I mean, as you can see, it kind of has that, that whole yeah. tone and, like, big muscly like dudes. members of Kiss with a their shirt. Yeah, yeah, totally, dude. white paint on. <clears throat> yeah. So what what are their what are their superpowers? What makes these they're these just like special? they're just like mercenary pirates. Okay. Um, did you ever see Pirates of Dark Water? No. Did you ever watch that? Um, Wait. It, Pirates of Dark. It was on I when think we were I kids. Have, actually, super yeah. sick. I think it was only like two or three seasons, but super yeah. rad show. It's very similar to that. Um, uh, it's they just you know travel the galaxy. They're 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 like totally anti heroes. You know, like they kind of do what they want based on morality that they are feeling that day it yeah. doesn't really they're not really like superman or batman they don't really stand for like anything yeah. like that but um you just don't mess with their friends that's like something that you learned from like the star Slayer okay. series um but no it's cool because and the reason this episode is so sweet is uh star slayers solo for a long time and grim jack uh it's pretty funny because i was familiar with the grim jack comics before even reading this one but um Apparently, this is the first time Grim Jack and Star Slayer meet up. Hmm. And even if you go to the very back, it's pretty pretty trippy, pretty cool. Let me see if I can find it. If you go to the back, there's an ad. It says next month on there. I don't know if you can see it. And it says Grim Jack number one premieres so it's oh, kind of cool man so, so this is like what launched grim jack yeah this is what launched the uh grim jack oh, series dang. so it's pretty sweet man pretty pretty sweet so let's go check bad. it out if you like pirates in space and just aggro dudes beating up kind of bad guys <laughs> like, i mean it's People pretty funny bad guys yeah, yeah. It's, it was a very political um book too i mean they they like reagan references in there yeah they they take out like uh politicians like straight up mm. like they kill politicians in some of the episodes mm. um they uh they blow up like uh like embassies and Dang. stuff like that like i mean it's that, it's like, very fly anymore yeah it's media. not that's not cool anymore um but yeah, check it out. Go check out and check out the other Grim Jack uh, series too. It's pretty yeah. fun. Um, a lot of good stories, and they they pop around like every now and then. And uh, yeah, cool. It's a, good, it's a good story. So what do you got, man? All right, I got something a little more mainstream than what you got there. That was that was a little little off the beaten path. It is a little off the beaten path. I'm rocking Thor and Ghost Rider, dude. Nice. So two classics. Um, and Ghost Rider was like one of my favorite heroes for a long time. Until you probably can guess why. I'm not going to say anything. I might meet the guy someday. Oh. This is all you, dude. Nick Cage? (laughs) Yeah, dude. Nick Cage. And I can't even blame (laughs) the guy for being a terrible movie. It's just... I mean, there's great comic book hero movies. There's great movies out there. Are you talking about the scene where he pisses fire? I'm talking about every, pretty much every <laughs> scene in that movie. He pisses <laughs> fire, and it's like, that's where I lost it's, it. I could put up with everything else, and I was like, whoa. Yeah. He's, and he uses it as like a flamethrower. Yeah, It's kind of weird. No, really, it's in I mean, Ghost Rider 2. Go check it out. Ghost Rider, he's he's kind of quirky, and he's got like a little bit of like a Deadpooliness, and that he's like, Just he's doesn't like care. off the wall and doesn't care and does like wacky stuff like that. But I don't know. It's just that that was not communicated in the movies at all to me, man. It just seems so lame to me. <laughs> but Ghost Rider is awesome, and Thor is also awesome. And uh, so this is the Mighty Thor featuring Ghost Rider. And uh, yeah, dude, it's cool to see like these two, uh, like essentially immortals, just duking it out against like hordes of demons and yeah, zombies and that's stuff. Yeah, pretty dude. sick. Yeah. So this this is a rad one, dude. 
And it kind of ties into the Avengers because obviously yeah, Thor. Yeah, totally. Thor, so. exactly. Nice job. And uh, Chris Hemsworth does a great job as Thor. Yeah, I think. he's hot, he does, dude. Yeah, he's, he's a, a good-looking man. He's a, a fine, fine chunk of man right there. <laughs> um, Nicolas Cage as a superhero, can't really buy it. Yeah? Him, dude, him, him going like to the back of the Constitution and like finding little secret messages, I believe that. And like, what are those National Treasure? Dude, I, I love believe those, Nick Cage. I love those movies. Yeah, man. I'm down for that. I, I believe Nick Cage <laughs> doing that, or like him being like a weird kind of socially and like adaptation or whatever. Like, yeah. I believe all of that for Nick Cage. But as Ghost Rider, no, nah, nah, just nah. not happening. No, nah. I mean maybe if it was the '90s, like the Face Off era, Nick Cage, I'd believe that. Dude, he's such a trip in that movie, man. What he's a weirdo. Dope in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, not. What, oh, not sorry, not to cut you off, but that. That back? What's that about, man? That oh, hat dude. in the back. And then, like, my favorite <laughs> thing about finding these these throwback, like, this, I think this is from 1990, is the ads you find on the back. Is that Castlevania? Or? No, it was Dracula's Curse, which, like, nobody's ever heard of. And, yeah, it's, it's NES ad on the back. There's a Game Boy ad in the middle. So, like, the nostalgia that comes with finding old uh, comic books is just, it's awesome. Like, half of it is reading the stories and, like, seeing how storytelling has evolved over the years. And then the other half is being like, oh, a Game Boy ad halfway through this. Like, I remember having a Game Boy and playing Mega Man on it and stuff on road trips. Dude. And, like, I'm pretty sure cards and stuff. Like, yeah, it's awesome. I'm pretty sure that's Castlevania, bro. Is that it says Dracula's yeah. curse on it? But it says Castlevania right above it. Oh, that is Castle- <laughs> no, you're right. Castlevania three. Dracula's dude, I know, curse. I know my Castlevania. No, you're That's totally <laughs> right, dude. You're totally right. But I didn't want to, I didn't want to be wrong, just in case it was Dracula's no, curse. You're, you're right, dude. Totally. So, what is your last one, Gabe? My last one is Justice League of America, and this yeah, came out in up. 1964, dude. Check Dang. that out. Yeah, how rad is that? Is so, this, this one's from your personal collection, isn't it? Yeah, this one is from my personal collection. This is one of my favorite Justice League That's comic books. Awesome. Mainly because so like, it. How far into the the Justice League storyline does this one take place? Uh, this is issue twenty seven. Okay, of so like, not that far in. It's issue twenty seven of like a fifty run of fifty. Okay, or something I thought like there that. was way more Justice League, but there's all kinds of different iterations and stuff. Well, okay, a lot of people. You're right, but. I'm a purist when it comes to, like, storylines and stuff. And, dude, a lot of these, like, Marvel switches it up, like, every couple years. Sure. Like, all the time. Yeah. And DC does, too, with, like, the new 52 and stuff. DC does, too. But they'll just, like, pull something off the wall. Like, they'll just, like, oh, um, Superman got trapped in, you know, an alternate universe. And then he'll be there for, like, however many issues. So I kind of have my own way of, like breaking it up okay it's just for my own sanity but sure. uh let me kind of scared to pull this one out of the yeah that's yeah it's like super fragile but um it's pretty sweet it's uh the justice league it's one of the f- the first issues where the justice league actually get defeated oh um, whoa. yeah they get defeated yeah, they're all by wrapped oh, up check right it out, here. man yeah, they're all being like tied up by his, like some it's um some tentacles it's, coming from a little portal thing. It's the eye, and not okay. eye as in like retina. It's eye as in he's the eye. Yeah. Um, and the eye who he, defeated the Justice League. Yeah, it's a superstar only? spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he um he's pretty much this like omnipotent being, mm-hmm. and it's kind of funny because like if they ever had him in a movie, I'd be really interested to see what he looked like. Or it, it's not even a he; it's just an it because it's just a massive sheet. Like if you read the comic book, it's hilarious because it doesn't really look that threatening. It's this little; it looks like a shower curtain sheet that's just floating around, destroying the world and and, <laughs> the, uni- and the universe. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you can like flip through there yeah, and see very a, a picture of of it. But yeah, he causes all this confusion. Flash gets his butt kicked. Um, Wonder Woman gets her butt kicked. Green Lantern is like pretty much like, screw it. I'm out. I can't even deal with this. I'm going back. Good luck, guys. Superman cries a little bit. Um, <laughs> Batman like oh, whoa, is, this is a, it's like a yeah. You see it? Floating bed sheet. Yeah. So Batman's ready to like throw in the towel. Um, it's a pretty interesting. Um, article and uh i don't know it's a good piece of history so yeah no this is check it out guys dude when you get a chance and uh thank you for supporting uh comics i want to say one thing we're talking about the ads and these things 
This is from, what did you say, 1967? 1964. 1964. Did you see what's on the back? No, I didn't. It's <laughs> it's like a, I don't want to call it like a pyramid scheme, but <laughs> make money, get prizes with fast-selling American seeds. Let me see that. So you they give you seeds, and then you go and sell seeds to your friends. That is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you can get like a croquet set or That's like pretty a, awesome. a kayak by selling seeds. That's pretty that tight, man. Ridiculous. That's awesome. I guess it depends on who you're talking to. Man, so that's, someone's making a lot of money. That is such a cool thing about about old books is uh, their time capsule. Yeah, dude. It's such a cool time capsule. Yeah. yeah. And that that villain. That's I think that's another villain that I don't know would fly today. Yeah. Just like it because just it's a like sheet. A ripple. It probably would find fly just fine. Yeah, I mean, like literally. But <laughs> come on, Gabe. Oh gosh, oh gosh! Enough with Those the, the corn yeah. balls. Yeah, good, good pull on that one. I like that Sweet, a lot. Sweet man. So that was our team ups. Sweet. So, yeah. Should we get to our interview? Yeah, let's talk to Matt. Let's get to Commander Echo's guest of honor. Whoa. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> We're here with uh, Matt Alcobia, our guest of honor for the day. How's it going? How you guys doing? Doing good. Yeah. Doing pretty good. Doing just fine. Thanks, Thanks for coming for on the show. having me on the show. Totally. Oh, I was about to thank you for being here. That's all good. So you beat me to the punch. Nice. What's up, dude? There's a lot up. I know. We've been pretty busy. It seems that way with you. You always have so much going on, dude. Every time I talk to you, there's like a, a laundry list of things you want to you want to talk about. And there's like festivals yes. and shows and events yeah. and um, I know releases. You dropping you dropping those mad EPs, bro? Or you dropping those mad singles? We're dropping a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, if you guys don't know, is the owner of a record label? Is that a correct title for you? Yeah, I'm one of the directors. Okay. For Noise Cartel? For Noise Cartel, one of two directors. So yeah. at the moment, um, I'm looking after things in America, and mm. uh, my business partner, Reese, is looking after things in Australia. Sweet. Nice. And you guys started in Australia? We're established in Australia, and we did start there, yes. Uh, label's about uh, not even a year and a half old. Sick. Um, and wow. we're skying forward in leaps and bounds. Sweet, man. And uh, also, too, people probably don't know this, but I'm currently signed to your record label. Yes, yeah, so we got this exclusive interview. So we got the. He, he doesn't do interviews, from what I hear. He like very rarely comes out of his hole to do interviews. I think Not it's more because he's busy than he refuses to talk uh, to the press. But I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to make it seem cool. Yeah, let me, let me church it up a little bit, oh, man. Yeah, Why you got a dog on my church thing, away, dude? Whatever, man. <laughs> so <laughs> I would actually rather excuse you guys, my friend. You guys do the interviews. <laughs> you, you would rather us do yeah. the interview? If someone hits me up for an interview, I'll probably pass it on to one of the artists. Dude. Oh, okay. Word, man. Gotcha. Yeah. Your success is my success. There you go. That's and how that's, we work. That seems like kind of the philosophy you have with the record label, too. That is the philosophy, yes. Um, we're trying to change the music industry a little bit mm -hmm. and act on more of a respectful and fair level than what's currently in the market. Unfortunately, um, the music industry has turned into uh, something that's more about money rather than about the music. Yeah. yeah. And that shows in like entertainment and stuff like that and people that are out there. So I'm trying to bring it back to what it should be and what it used to be, or yeah. at least make an attempt or cause some cause some, you know, waves in the market yeah. and get some people pissed off at me. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah, it means you're doing something right if people are mad at you. Yeah. I like that, dude. Getting you fired up on the show, man. <laughs> I was like, no, I no, it shows passion, you know. I I totally uh I dig that. I really understand that. Speaking of um, your philosophy for the record label, what are some of the things that you have planned out or are, have figured out or however you want to say it that you do differently from other labels? Um, so we focus wholly on the artist and helping the artist succeed independently. Um, we structure you guys to have uh, a business plan behind you and create uh, a music business for yourself instead of having somebody else do that for you. 
um, and in turn you make more money from that mm. and you're in control of everything that's a cool thing you own you own everything you own yourself you own your music f forever nice and um, basically we give you a platform to get widespread exposure help you to get shows and stuff like that align you with key people who, who are working with us in the back end and um, you just go from there right it on. doesn't suit everybody but it suits people um, you know who, who want to work hard at it and those are the people who are going to make a lot of money what do you yeah. mean what do you mean by that what do you mean it doesn't suit anybody like what kind of people have you ran into that it doesn't really work so, out for them or they turn away from i it? mean a lot in the music industry right now is based on being associated with like certain key labels or something mm, like that yeah. somebody wants to be signed to labels and that's a big thing because it like feels good to them and they think that they're awesome when they get signed <laughs> to like Sony yeah. or something and like that. And there is some like some gravitas that goes with that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, uh, I mean, it is a way to do it, which is fine. Uh, and you can make a lot of money doing that. But yeah. I'm not the person personally as an artist who wants to be told how to act and where to go and what to do and be accountable for s anyone else other than myself. So um, artists who you know, want to do that for themselves and want to manage themselves and make their own schedules and produce when they want to and how much they want to and, you know, have an image that they want to have and all that sort of stuff, then that, that's more what it caters to. So there's people who um, I've talked to about signing and they're after what I call an easy way which is mm. working for someone else like everyone else does in the world. Yeah. Or you can do it the hard way, which is working for yourself. And if you work for yourself, and generally in business, you make more money than when you work for somebody else. Yeah. yeah that's crazy, man. Yeah, like, uh, so what happens when, when something like, when you have a meeting or you go to meet up with, like, a band and, and they say, like, oh, no, you know, it's we're trying to get signed to or has it have like we're trying to get signed to warner brothers or we're trying to get signed to sony or that has happened yeah um there's also been occasions where i've uh talked to bands who were interested in signing with noise cartel records and i've actually said you know you guys have the knowledge and you're doing everything right to do it all yourself and i'll give them the contacts to do that mm. oh really yeah. cool that's that's awesome, man. That's super rare too, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. if, most I mean, most record labels would be like, "Oh, no, no, you need us." Instead of like like, "No, you guys got it down. Just keep doing your thing and here's some more people that can help you on your way." That's but, like really respectable. That's yeah. Sweet, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, we just grow and get bigger and take off that way and I'll, I'll benefit from that and in yeah. the exposure side of things, but the artists are going to benefit the most out of everybody else. And that probably creates like a huge amount of loyalty too. Where they're like noise cartel totally hooked us up they weren't trying to like like oh, mess yeah. around with the money and they were honest with us i can vouch for that yeah, yeah like totally gabe, gabe <laughs> has gone on like long rants about like he was with <laughs> other labels and they were not honest with him and he's like still dealing with the repercussions from that yeah and he was like it seemed too good be good to be true when he met with you i think i i think i told you no at first actually like when we we met the first or talked the first time i was kind of like no i'm good man like you know you're in australia it's kind of sketchy uh sounds a little dodgy man but you know if you want to meet up and talk i'm not gonna say no you know so let's meet up and talk yeah and, and yeah you took me out to uh he he flew out to the states and we what's that place that burned down that just burned down like that uh, pub that just burned down on pb Mission Bru No, no, no. Um, is it I know what you're right next to the right firehouse? Next to the firehouse. Yeah. That's the irony of it. Is that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did they put the fire out really fast? No. It's. <laughs> is it toasted? Is it toasted? As or? far as I know, it's it's, it's like it's gone, done right? for. It's yeah. right there on the water, though. I know what you're talking about. PB Alehouse. PB Alehouse. Yes. PB Alehouse. Remember, yeah. Remember that meeting? Yes, we went up there. He doesn't remember that meeting. I got him drunk. So many meetings. And made him sign some papers. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happened? I, I thought I, I remember it well. I actually don't remember it. That's true. Yeah, you no, roofied yeah. you. You wouldn't remember it. Yeah. That was a good time, though. So. <laughs> that was a really good time. So you're kind of like, you're kind of like a pretty punk rock label. Like you probably, like you said, you probably have already pissed off a lot of other labels or people who are trying to keep that stuff secret from other bands. Like, um, I mean, I know I've already talked to a few bands. I won't name them, but, um, at shows and stuff where I've been talking about Noise Cartel and what you've done for me and everything and, they, and they've been like wait I didn't even know that existed like they told you that or you know he you know all the stuff you've exposed me to of how the insides of how a lot of the royalties work and all that stuff and I've talked to other bands and they've been like what like I didn't even know about that and I'm like yeah because the label does though like the label's making yeah, gobs of money off that so you probably have you already have you had run-ins with like 
other labels yet? Like or like through have, the window? Have you had or? people getting pissed off that you're like giving too much information to other no, bands? I or? mean, it's not. No, it's free information. You know, I was lucky yeah. enough to have. Uh, a musician in Australia who's um, pretty well known around the world and stuff and selling a lot of music um, give me some insight on the whole back end of the industry mm. and he was actually the person who like pointed me in the right direction and I just took it from there it's an industry that I understand like yeah I've been doing this my whole life and been involved in music my whole life and my whole family is so everything that I, I get put on to I just know or understand how it all works and stuff like that so um he pointed me that direction if it wasn't for him you know i wouldn't have done that for myself as a musician and i think you know you should be able to give that information out and, and it's free and you can go out and get it online and figure out how to do it yourself yeah. but a lot of people just don't know where to look though that's the thing yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people don't have someone that um tells them where to go and i mean this might sound a little like borderline conspiracy theory ish but um i don't know man i mean i've been doing music for a long time and i've talked to a lot of people big people big names in the industry you know late whether it's labels royalties licensing companies whatever and um dude none of them ever pointed me in that direction so i'm just saying they make like, more money I mean, if they don't yeah you yeah. know what i mean like i i think you are doing like really super rare cool thing for um to be giving that information freely out to people because it's super empowering and um i've already been able to do a lot with it and learned a lot more about the business than i ever thought i would know or cared to know Matt, are you allowed so, to tell us who that artist was that you're talking about his name is john linham john linham yeah cool right on look that up open up a new tab Check John, that out. John Lynham. Google it. He's a singer, songwriter, acoustic performer. He's played in a lot of bands. Like he works with a lot of people. Nice. Um, we were doing a bit of work with him and an Ari Award winning producer in Australia for a little while there. So um, he, he's been well seasoned in the industry, but um, he sort of just does gigs and stuff like that. Nice. I've heard that the industry is a lot different in between Australia and here in that a lot of people in America just want to be in bands because it's cool and they want to do <laughs> yeah. it because it's fun and it seems like an awesome lifestyle. I've heard that too, actually. And in Australia, like, they don't do it unless they are, like, dedicated to it and have good music and have the skills and have the talent. I've heard it's, like, way less of a, of a uh, what's the word I'm looking for, saturated market out there where people have talent and that's why they succeed in Australia as opposed to here where everybody wants to be in a band. Yeah, I mean, it's more to do with the industry being different. Mm -hmm. um, the music industry in Australia is miles ahead of what it is in America. Um, uh, they really follow the UK a lot and what's happening overseas. So okay. like Asia and the UK and Australia are like well tied in pretty well with oh, all, really? all what's happening in, in the That's music sweet. market and what's moving forward and the new styles and genres that are coming out and that yeah. sort of thing. So uh, like the charts over there change on a, on a regular basis every week. And there's people in and out of them all the time. Whereas yeah. like in America, you can you get a charts for a long on the top time. For, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Over there, it's not like that. It changes a lot. Uh, yeah. Mostly different with, like, genres, dance too, music. and stuff? Um, yeah, different genres, too. You know, there's always, you know, if, if there's a new genre that comes out, then that's what's big over there. Someone was telling cool. me that they were over there, and uh, they went to a, um, they went to, like, a big band swing concert, mm. and they said it was people in there from the age, like, 12 years old all the way up to people like in their 60s and i said it was the craziest thing because they're like you would never you would almost never see that in the u.s um yeah you would probably never see that here <laughs> yeah it's like an antiquated and people genre were, and not just kids like being dragged with their parents or their yeah. family they were like actually stoked like these 12 year old kids were like ready to go see i forget the name of the band that she said it was yeah but yeah, she said they were stoked to be there. Like they, like you could that's tell rad. they listened to this music, and I'm like, man, that's that's crazy. I mean, like most twelve year olds, you can almost assume just by age range, like age what range, they're what into. they're into, yeah. and the clothes they're wearing and stuff. So, um, is it like that? Like, old, is that pretty common, or is that does that surprise you um, too? Uh, not really. I mean, it, it's just because they're more musically educated and cultured in the music industry. Yeah. Dang, dude, hitting us hard, man. <laughs> no, that's dude. Yeah. That's gonna a start a war I like think. on our show, man. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> not, not you guys. <laughs> no, America's yeah, just, gonna be like, just rah, rah, rah. America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, like, I, I can see that. Like you personally as like an electronic type live act is moving forward in the industry here. And yeah. like as you're progressing, like that, you know, there's more, you're getting a lot more followers too because that style is becoming bigger here. Um, you know, if you change to a rock and roll band, then it's going to be harder for you. Hmm. Well, I won't do that then. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I will take your advice, my friend. But the guys, you know, what, what you were saying, Dan, about um, people over there, not like, you know, everyone's a DJ or everyone's a yeah. band. Um, it's more so the fact that you have to be good. Mm. You have to be better than like the next person. Otherwise, you just won't get the work over there. Yeah. And and when you are, then you'll you'll go big. And also, Australia is good for supporting independent artists and stuff like mm. that, and people who are evolving, um, especially with radio and that sort of thing as well. So there's there's a lot of support, and there's a lot of artists who make it big over there because of that. And there's just better exposure, um, and, and you know, it's ov obviously not as big of a population too. So yeah, what's um what's like the difference between like mainstream over there? Is mainstream cool over there or is, do more people listen to like internet radio and pandora and stuff like that you know mainstream is cool everywhere if you go yeah, i guess that's true yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually <laughs> that's why it's called mainstream is popular right? stuff cool <laughs> over yeah. there dude yeah. popular stuff is cool like the people in the charts here are i mean also like, in the charts there i mean yeah. like are there like are there like little hipster segments of people that are like uh, what i guess to clarify more is is it this like we have you know our radio stations that play like our Britney Spears whoever's like our Britney Spears of the yeah. times are are like b boy bands of the time is it like that out there or do you hear a lot more variety like on mainstream radio you hear a there? lot more variety you do I can yeah. believe it I mean I work Al at yeah. an alternative station which is like you would think plays a bunch of different cutting edge stuff but it it honestly gravitates toward a lot of of stuff that you've already heard a thousand times and that's a, a victim of how the industry is for yeah. sure but that's like, important too for some people like yeah, it I, definitely is i'll be honest personally i don't understand that but what i do understand is i know people that like i mean they really listen to radio stations like the one you work for yeah and like it literally gets them through the day oh totally. like it's great and like and again I, for me i need variety but like yeah. i know people who are like no like I, that's my favorite radio station i'm like they're just all about you yeah. know supporting they hear their, these you know, 50 songs yeah <laughs> sprinkled throughout their day a bunch of times and i probably would too if i didn't work there and had heard these songs like <laughs> tens of thousands of times yeah. now they're still good songs but i've just i've heard them all way too many times and once in a while you'll get a new one and like the new modest mouse song that came out is is pop off right now and i love that song but i don't want to hear it anymore because in two weeks you'll probably times. be sick of it exactly yeah. yeah so i think their new album comes out today by the way modest mouse sorry getting off topic <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but you, you know even in regards to that i think the industry is changing uh in that area yeah i mean look at pandora and inter internet radio a lot of people are migrating towards that because it's different stuff and mm -hmm. a lot of people out there are sick of hearing the same shit all the time yeah, yeah. You know, for sure. I don't want to hear the same song ten times on on the radio during the day. Yeah, I yeah. heard it. Play something else. Yeah, <laughs> it's, gonna, yeah. it's gonna be played tomorrow too, and the day after. <laughs> yeah, and and the day after. or you can just go look it up. And next month, you can always count on it though, which is the nice thing. Like if you're like, yeah, I want to hear some of my favorite, like some classic favorites, you can turn on the station, you can hear them. Mm -hmm. But then after that, you want to turn on Pandora and hear some stuff you haven't That's heard, true. or or bands that don't get radio play that you're into, that kind of stuff. So. What are yeah. some of the what are the, some of, some of the companies that people would uh, recognize that you're working with right now? Like Noise Cartel specifically is working with right now. Um, what, what do you mean? What are the companies? Like, like what do you? How do you? Wh who do you distribute through? Um, uh, mm -hmm. We distribute through Zellin Entertainment, who are um, one of the biggest distributors in yeah. the world digitally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you've ever heard of labels like Ministry of Sound or some of those yeah, popular yeah, yeah. dance music labels, that's their distributor. So nice. we're on the same sort of scale as a lot of those large scale um, labels that are out there. Um, we're partnered with AIR, which is Australian Inter Independent Record Label Association. Mm. Um, they give us uh, a solid stand in the market. Um, the the major labels have a lot of control over the music industry through money. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they can go one day. We want to pull all the independence music videos down off of YouTube. No way. Mm. Right? And um, that happens to a lot of independent artists who are trying to make it themselves. That and, sucks. Uh, there's people, labels like us, when you're associated with companies like that, 
um, who are protected. So all our artists don't get affected by things like that. And we're seeing wow. that, yeah. yeah. Has, the majors try and push push some people out of the market sometimes. And uh, when you're partnered with companies like that, they they help you hold your ground and mm. stop that from happening. That's crazy. Has that happened recently at all? Like that you any cool that any YouTube like thing was a true fact. <laughs> Dude, didn't that happen like with? Uh, almost all videos on YouTube that or something like oh, a year yeah, ago remember here about yeah. something like that like yeah they're trying to take like everything yep. down yeah that's crazy because there wasn't like the the platform for compensation wasn't like set up how they wanted it to be so they're like let's just take it all down it's like no you do not understand all the exposure that you get from people hearing this music even if you're not getting paid right now for it those people are going to go to your shows they're going to go buy songs off iTunes and stuff like oh, yeah don't be stupid yeah I um have you ever have you ever had to gone to battle for something like that for like a artist or or to defend noise cartel like um I way? haven't had to defend anybody uh um, no no i mean we're we're not doing anything that needs defending you know what i mean yeah <laughs> anyone can you know a, a major can try and sue us or someone an artist can try and sue us for doing something but um we're we're pretty pretty sweet in the industry legally with all that stuff like yeah. i know my shit and i make sure that our artists know their shit so um everyone's pretty good like cool we stay away from any of that bad stuff cool we just focus on music there sick man <laughs> want to get yeah, some dude. twitter questions yeah here? Dude, let's do some quitter. wake that computer up, all man. right so let's start her off here what is the most difficult part of running an indie label probably the amount of work you have to put into it mm. um you know, we've got, as of today, with artists who are, like, about to be released through us, uh, 17 uh, producers and artists working with us. Yeah. And um, I pretty much manage that by myself with Reese. Wow. <laughs> so that's a lot of people. And, like, you know how, how much I work with you all the time. With Yeah, you're very hands-on. Try, yeah. Trying to make sure everyone's yeah, on the yeah. right track and <laughs> helping them out and all that sort of thing. So That's cool, man. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's very cool. Very yeah, cool. you have to be motivated. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel that's one of the the hard things about being on or being an independent artist where you don't know, you don't even know yourself yet, really. You know, you're still discovering yourself. Mm. And so you're like, how do I full-blown just attack something? And I think some of the best advice I ever had was just do stuff, do whatever you're doing, just obviously i mean the cliche one have fun you got to have fun with what you're yeah. doing but also like musically just make something that sounds cool like try to make from like someone told me that specifically like just don't try to get the same guitar tone that led zeppelin has don't try to get the same synth that you know dead mouse has or whatever just attack your music as if you're just trying to make it sound cool like you're not trying to make it sound like anybody else's music just make a cool sounding song and see where that gets you and um so far it's been pretty awesome so um yeah i don't know but at the same time it's kind of hard because you have to find that you know what i mean like you have to yeah. figure out how to at the same time where you're like groove. trying to get gigs and you're trying to figure out all the practical sides of of being an artist or a band yeah you're trying like, to discover yourself like creatively and musically too like how do i know if this is even good if people yeah. are even gonna you know uh pay attention to it but that's where you just got to do it because you love it, you know, and it. see what people see what happens and hopefully be part of a record label that supports you in doing. Yeah, that too. Dude. By the way, thanks, man. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next Twitter question is, uh, are you strictly an electronic based record label? And if so, do you plan on branching out ever? No, we are not strictly a genre based label. Mm. Um, I did not want to pigeonhole myself uh, in, in yeah. that area. Um, you know, I want to be as big as we can possibly be, but we also have to stick within the guidelines of our, our distribution outlet as well. Yeah. Um, so electronic music, we can get on over 600 platforms around the world, which is massive. Um, anything else isn't quite that much, but you're still on every major platform that you could think of in your yeah. mind. Um, so you've got more exposure than you could get yourself. Um, but no, I mean, we've got like indie pop artists and stuff like that and singer songwriters and bands. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a whole, whole wide spectrum of what, what we put on there. Right on, and, dude. Um, I mean, you know, I'm 
I'm not going to sign any classical people or like country people because it's yeah. just like not the area that we focus on. And you want to be passionate about the artists you sign too, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm I like all sorts of music, but yeah, it's, you know, I'm not going to do like a country show somewhere, so yeah. it's not going to benefit. Dude, what's wrong with country, that, man? Nothing. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm it's just not going <laughs> to benefit that sort of an artist because I'm not focused yeah, on. That, yeah, so. yeah. So, uh, what if I was to break the news to you right now that I'm giving up D-Lod and um, I'm going to start a country band. The Digital Lizards of Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And uh, these guys are your line dancers. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to give them like a cowboy hat. And <laughs> I'd, I'd still go to your shows. Yeah? Yeah. yeah you'd probably you just, kick you off the label. Just give me a <laughs> <laughs> you'd still show up. <laughs> I'd appreciate that, man. I'd really appreciate right. that. All right. <laughs> moving along. Uh, are you planning on taking over in the independent world, or are you just going with the flow? Dang, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, intense question. I'm not trying to take anyone over or take anyone out. i have just focused yeah. on m- my own project, and you know, I have a big vision of where I want this to go, which is huge. And sure. I, uh, you know, eventually down the track, I want to be able to get funding to help unfortunate people get into the industry and mm. succeed as musicians, and you know, get coached by all you guys who are established on the label and out there. Uh, and um, that you know, I've got goals like that that I'm working towards, and I'm focused yeah. on helping our artists and the label get exposed more and get more people and get bigger, and everyone makes money and stuff like that. That's I'm sick, not focused man. on trying to you know do something to somebody else because that takes away from what's yeah. my task at hand. Yeah. So yeah. No. Also, it seems that if you're trying to have like an aggressive approach like that, it doesn't work out for you. Yeah. You know, it's, these questions are a bit hostile. Actually. Yeah. They, <laughs> at least <laughs> like, that one. Are you gonna <laughs> kill the next person who says <laughs> this about the label? Like, yeah, we're um, actually gonna go gangster like old school and just start doing yeah. drive-by ca- and. Stuff. Uh, I think like there is a game question, question on stuff. here. Oh, you know, I didn't. I didn't. Do you uh, see yourself as the modern day Tupac? No, no. Uh, there was a gang question. <laughs> I guess I didn't put it up there, but yeah, we someone someone said something, and then maybe they didn't get who our guest was, but they they were wanted to know if you'd been in a gang. Like I'm not even joking, because <laughs> it's a like, noise cartel. Yeah, maybe? I don't know. Maybe if like if you guys actually <laughs> operated as a gang, I didn't bother. I'm uh, sorry if you're watching <laughs> this, but I didn't yeah, they bother smuggle, to put that. They smuggle CDs over the border <laughs> and sell them illegally. I didn't. That, that, that that, that's actually like part of what's in the name of noise cartel records because yeah. it's like a cartel like we're we're doing something differently i was wrong yeah i was 100 percent wrong <laughs> it, it is not a, an a, appropriate gang and we don't have like yeah ncr tattoos or anything <laughs> that's the next step though right yeah. ncr tattoos yeah. heck Joe. yeah everyone has to get a neck tattoo are you, are you wearing your your colors today dude you're getting a tatty <laughs> see. I'm getting tatty black gray and blue and, <laughs> and jeans is that the black the and gang? jeans that's, there it. You go. that's the <laughs> australian flag dude Nice. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's Is not. It? It's, no, it's not, not even no, close. Not. Let's just move on to the next question. <laughs> stars and stuff. Yeah. Come on, dude. All right. Um, is it easy finding good artists, and, and how do you find them? Oh, nice. Um, well, you found me. That's that a good question easy, because, so. you know, there, there's a lot of ways to go about that with, like, scouting and stuff like that. But yeah. um, I'm not, I don't actively look for artists. Like, I'm building what I'm building and helping my guys. And a lot of times, um, guys on the label will um, put us forward to somebody or find an artist and say, you should check these guys out. Or I'm, like, well in the scene on, like, five, six days a week. So Mm -hmm. I'm I'm out seeing people and, you know, seeing new artists and talent that's out there and stuff. And That's so cool. If someone, if there's someone out there who's just, you know, got that sound and something different that looks good to me that would, like work with the label and it fits what we're trying to do then i'll talk to him further about it and yeah. see what's up but awesome, there's a lot of times man. where i give someone a card or say you know hit me up and you don't ever hear from anybody but you know i'll always leave the ball in their card to do that and sure that, that me that trips me out man seriously i mean like when you uh when you know someone gives you a card i mean you just follow up i just feel like that's just good business you know no matter what you know even yeah. if it's like an email and like, hey man checked out your site um not really thinking it's something i could work with but hey um if you ever need anything in the future i'll hold on to your information i'll you know hit you up and it's it's bizarre how many people i think uh, i mean i did that when you came to the states i um 
I, when you start when you moved out here, I hit up tons of acts, like mm-hmm. tons of dudes, like really good solid acts. And I said, hey, this guy's coming out. You know, you guys are my homies, so obviously I'm trying to hook you guys up first. Like yeah. he's kind of come check out a lot of bands and a lot of acts and artists and stuff. So send me your show dates, uh, send me your information. I'd love to get it to him. And I think I had about like five people get back to me. I don't know how probably, many like 50 oh like, wow dude tons i was like emailing every because i was just like on overload you know like beast zone just trying yeah. to like get everyone and like dude this guy's coming out like you gotta meet him he's so rad and i probably had like what like, wasn't it five didn't i end up sending you like five people and then out of that five people what you met up with two or three yeah like it was crazy and i'm like that's insane but it kind of shows i mean if you're not if your heart's not in it your heart's not in it you know yeah so that's it. Totally. I mean, you know, when you have uh, that that sort of aspect in, in who you are as your business, and if you're, you know, those traits and those skills in in business, then you do well. That's why you do well, because you pursue stuff and you're good in business. So, thank you, Matt. <laughs> um, sp- a little shout out to Raji Rabbit because he was actually one of those dudes that oh, I yeah. uh, sent your way. So yeah, Raji yeah. Rabbit. Raji. Raji's Raji. killing it, dude. I was at Raji one of, is killing it. Dude, I was at one of his shows like a couple of weeks back and it was just wall to wall people. Like it was so cool to see, man. I love I love seeing that. Nice. So yeah. All right. Dope. Last Twitter question here. Um It says why people pay attention to noise cartel records, but I'm gonna imagine it's why should or why do people pay That's attention probably my typing error. to noise yeah. cartel records. Sorry, Twitter <laughs> person. Why, why should we care about noise cartel records? Um, I mean, we already know based on all of the things we've already talked about, but I, I mean, in five words or less, <laughs> support independent music. There you go. Nice support. Independent. Booyah. That's three words. Dude. Dude. With this guy's a master. <laughs> a samurai. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it's about supporting independent music and and basically like decent people and yeah. part of my criteria for an artist joining up with us or who I would work with is that you have to be decent people. You have to be kind-hearted, um, and, and that's a lot what the industry lacks as well. Mm. Um, there's a lot of people out there in music who are full of themselves and don't give a shit about anybody except for themselves. Um, but you know, I, I'm not interested in working with people like that. And a lot of people see that as like, oh, that just comes with it. You're in a band, so you have you have to have an ego. You have to be kind of a doucher. But no, you don't. Nah, you don't. I don't at agree all. with that at all. Yeah, I mean, it's stereotyped too. I've been stereotyped for being like a label director as yeah. well from like family and stuff, even. And friends really? of family, yeah. Huh. So, <laughs> like in what way? Like, I've how had do to they like regard prove you? myself to people? So, oh, just because they're like, oh, you know, you're a record label director, you're like involved in the music industry, you're an artist, and you're just gonna like cheat on an, like, your girlfriend, and mm. you're gonna like do drugs and all this sort of thing. And, yeah. But, you know, I mean, it happens in the industry, yes, but if you're the type of person that wants to do that, then okay. But if you're not, then there's those people as well. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of them in the industry, there's both sides. That's crazy, man. Yeah, Yeah, dude. Like, it is such a bizarre industry, and I don't even know, like, where half this stuff comes from. I mean, obviously, like, you got, like, you know, Axl Rose, and you hear these, like, rock and roll stories and all that stuff. But seriously, though, like, um, for example, I I just played a show, and um, it was at at The Room in in L.A., and uh, they called. Like, I was talking to the owner, and he called me, like, a few days after and was like, hey, like, you guys, uh, did you cl- clean up, like, your, your green room and stuff? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, that's amazing. Like, nobody ever, <laughs> nobody, and he was blown away. And I was, like, waiting for, like, oh, crap, like, what is he going to blame me for? You know, like, yeah, oh, I was, yeah. like, ready did you to. steal something? I was ready yeah, yeah. to, I was on the offense, you know, like, ready to defend myself. And. He was just like, that's awesome, man. Like, you guys can play here anytime. And I, I was so, like, kind of heartbroken for the guy because I was like, yeah. dude, like. A bunch of a-holes <laughs> like, in there tearing up your stuff. Who do you hang stuff? out with? <laughs> you know? So, yeah, that's that's crazy, man. But that's cool. So you're, like, the you're not only, like, the coolest record label in the world, you're the nicest record label in the world. You're like a big know. fluffy cloud. Like in the world, but. Yeah. Big fluffy yeah. cloud. Yeah. And humble, too. Oh, gosh, dude. Just like <laughs> taking them down, dude. Did you rehearse? You, you no, got a chance to peek rehearse. at the questions, didn't you? I don't rehearse. And I think you did. I just wing, wing it. It's more Said fun. Said your PR person <laughs> can't go over it all. <laughs> like, we can't answer these questions. <laughs> um, 
That's cool, though, man. Yeah, actually, you broke a light at one of these recent shows that you did. You were like, oh, yeah, freaking out about it. <laughs> I was like, dude, it's okay. You know, I was freaking really out like, about that. You're like, oh, God, I can't believe it. <laughs> I got to apologize to the venue. Yeah, I called you. I was like, dude, I'm working on this, like, email. I got to write up and, like, it's apologize. Like a fruit basket. <laughs> and, no, I was going to buy him, like, a new light and stuff. Yeah. But, I mean... I guess they didn't really they they didn't really care. I I apologized when I I went in to to pick up some stuff later too, and I brought it up and they're like, "What?" Like they didn't even remember what <laughs> had happened. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, I've been like stressing out about it for like yeah. a couple of weeks now." And they gave us more shows. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So come back and break more lights, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Sweet, you know man. all that stuff. You know, this is the entertainment industry. Like people are here to entertain. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of weird shit that you see. Oh, yeah. A lot of par- crazy parties you go to. Mm-hmm. It all happens, but it's the entertainment industry. You just go with it. And if you have an open mind, which you have to have in, in this industry, then, you know, it, it all works out. Yeah. Otherwise, you freak out and it doesn't work for you. Yeah. Cool, man. Rad. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for coming out, dude. Yeah, and thank uh, you for signing awesome. my band, too. Yeah, thanks for having us. And, <laughs> you know, follow us and support our guys. Follow yeah. Gabe. If you haven't been to his one of his shows, go to one of his shows. He will amaze you. Drop some, oh, plugs, for, that, but. Drop some plugs for Noise Cartel. Where can we find all the artists that you guys have on your label and all that kind um, of good stuff? Our website is the best, uh, noisecartelrecords.com. Noise okay. is with a Z, N-O-I-Z-E. Uh, Facebook, nope. uh, facebook.com slash noise cartel records. Um, we just branched out a sister company called noise cartel covers mm. that we're just get, getting off the ground, which is dedicated to releasing, uh, cover music into the market. Nice. Awesome. Uh, so, you know, there's a market for that for our artists as well. So. Dude, dude, I'm going to release yeah, some man. cool stuff. Some Tegan yeah. and Sarah stuff. Mm-hmm. Nice. I got a track I could shoot you for that. Yeah. I covered love fool by the cardigans. My dude. electro pop version of that. I'll, I'll shoot that over. You yeah. gotta check out some Snowflake stuff too. That's his. That's his. Uh, I, yeah. you've, I think you've heard some of my stuff. I'm I have, actually. I thought I've sent. Yeah. I'm, I'm recording I'm an EP right now, so we should cut all this out. I don't want. No, nah, dude. This no. is sweet. This I is prime stuff. That info yet? No, I'm just kidding. I don't care at all. Nah, dude. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Matt, for coming on, man. Yeah, Thank you, for dude. Having yeah. us. Do we knuck? We we knuck now. We knuck. <laughs> <We knuckles. laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching the Digital Lizards of Doom show. Um, what's our password for this week? Our password for this week is Noise Cartel Records. Awesome. So if you come down to Air Conditioned Lounge uh, from the release date of this episode to one week after, and you give them that password, uh, you will get your first round half off. Is that correct? Yeah, buddy. Sweet. So we will have all of the links to all of our social media stuff in the description of this video. And thank you again to Meltdown Comics for allowing us to do this. This is our favorite thing in the world to do right now. And, uh, yeah, we're just stoked. Thank you guys for checking it out. Super stoked. Thank you, guys. Have and a good week. Let's let's get some new crutch technology oh, yeah. out there. <laughs> let's get some new crutch this technology. Is, this is BS. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Yeah, thank you. This has been the Digital Lizard of Doom Show live at Meltdown. Meltdown.